Greetings. My name is Kevin Reddick, and I welcome you to my channel, Conversations from the Hot Pot. Here we are uh, passionate about discussing real life issues, and I do so from a Christian biblical perspective. Today's conversation addresses exploring the danger of religious entertainment. So jump in the car and let's run. A German philosopher is noted as saying that the more a person has in his own heart, the less he will require from the outside. Excessive need for support from the outside is proof of the bankruptcy of the inner man. If this is true, it infers that the inner life of the average person has no central core of moral assurance, no inner strength to place him above the need for repeated psycho psychological shots to give him the courage to go on living. He has become a parasite on the world, drawing his life from his social environment unable to live a day apart from the simulation or entertainment that such a life affords. Unfortunately, this is also true of some churches and its members. Now, this is not an attack, just an observation. And it is my hope and prayer that this post will lead other believers to take a good look in the mirror. Let's begin with a definition of religion. Religion is a set of beliefs, a, a form of worship, ritual, prayer, and a mode of moral behavior. The English word religion comes from the Latin religio, meaning awe or fear of a God or spirit. Most religions do affirm a supernatural realm and includes practices intended to worship or placate gods or spirits. True faith in God, uh, moral standards, and good works are important to a biblical understanding of true religion, contrasted with the pagans' false religion. Being religious refers to relating to or uh, manifesting faithful devo devotion to an acknowledged ultimate reality or deity. Relating to or uh, devoted to religious beliefs or observances. Religious refers to some personal encounter with the divine and has been an important element of American religion from the beginning. The religious experience introduces individuals to faith and help them maintain communication with God. In America, the quest for an experience with God takes many forms from evangelical conservatism to American Protestants, colonial Puritans, and contemporary Pentecostals. Religious experiences were key to gaining membership in the church, a lifelong relationship with God enhanced by prayer, Bible study, worship, and Christian living. Religious activities refer to interpersonal activities related to a religion and religious practice. And these are specifically social activities. Now, although religious experiences can be genuine encounters between people and God, it is dangerous to accept all religious experiences as valid. Religion significantly impacts our worldview. Religious beliefs and practices are highly interconnected with culture. Indeed, as with the philosophical, discerning the culture from the religious can range from challenging to undoable. What outsiders may view as religious practice, adherents may see it as simply a cultural tradition. For example, traditional Chinese people clean ancestral graves each spring Westerners tend to identify this as a religious practice, while the Chinese think of it as a cultural norm. In the book of Ezekiel, chapter 33, verses 31, 32, it declares, They come to you as the people come, and they sit before you as my people, and they hear your words, but don't do them. For with their mouth they show much love but their heart goes after their gain. 
Behold, you are to them as a very lovely song of one who has a pleasant voice and can play well on an instrument. For they hear your words, but they don't do them. And that's out of the complete Jewish Bible. Entertainment is defined as the action of providing or being provided with amusement or enjoyment. It's an event or performance designed to entertain. An individual asked me recently how religious entertainment can be wrong when every time a song is sung in church, that's a form of entertainment. And I said they were correct. That has become the issue in many churches. <laughs> that is not the original intent of God and the concept of worship. But unfortunately, when a church can't worship in spirit and truth, it employs entertainment. The individuals who can't lead a church to worship must provide entertainment. And that is why we have this issue of the heresy of religious entertainment in the church today. Entertainment used to relax the nerves and refresh a mind that is exhausted is okay with discretion. But an all out devotion to entertainment as a major activity for which and by which one is entertained solely for the sake of entertainment is not the will of God. So today we have the astonishing spectacle of millions of dollars being poured into providing earthly entertainment for the so-called sons of God and citizens of God's kingdom. Religious entertainment in many places is rapidly crowding out the serious things of God. Many churches these days have become little more than poor theaters where fifth-rated producers peddle their inferior goods with the full approval of the evangelical leaders. Pagamine is a British word referring to a theatrical entertainment uh, involving music, jokes. Uh, it's also referred to as a dramatic entertainment in which performers express meaning through gestures accompanied by music. It's a ridiculous or confused action or situation. In too many pulpits today, preaching, teaching, praise, and worship has strongly embraced the art of pantomime. It has suffered from guilt by association, and we tend to think of it as tawdry, cheap, or titillating. When drama becomes showy, calling attention, attention only to itself is wrong. But entertainment itself is not evil. Entertainment can move us powerfully and touch us deeply with truth. When it paves the way for the pastor to deal with a significant, deeply felt issue, entertainment can be a positive addition to a service. And again, let me make clear, I am not against the avenue of arts and entertainment to draw people into the body of Christ. I have concerns when it replaces teaching, disciplining, challenging, preaching, and confronting for the purpose of mental and spiritual growth. American church history tells the story of a time when the holiness and full gospel churches believed that the amusements of the world were not for Christians. And so it was understood that when you got converted and got filled with the spirit, you gave up the world's entertainment and amusements. Then there was a slow change and in the same fundamental Christianity, one by one, we met those worldly amusements at the door and welcomed them in. And nobody is against them anymore. Now we advertise them and they are part of our structure, a part of our DNA as the body of Christ.
in too many of our churches, the expectation of amusement is greater than the expectation of the manifestation of the power and glory of God with signs, miracles, and wonders. It's important to understand what is being said here. The word amusement has as its base the word muse. Muse means to think and amuse means not to think. A little A on there makes it a negative. A religious mentality characterized by a lack of moral courage has given us today a flabby Christianity, intellectually impoverished, dull, repetitious, and to a great many individuals, just plain weak in substance. We spoon feed this waste to our inquiring youth and to make it palatable, we sweeten it up with cardinal amusements from the unbelieving world. And it's easier to entertain than to teach or instruct or challenge. Now, you may think it's out of place for me to say so, but in our churches today, we are leaning too heavily upon human talents and educated ability. We forget the illumination of the Holy Spirit of God is a necessity, not only in our ministerial preparation, but in the administrative and leadership functions of our churches as well. Jesus and the Holy Spirit must be the center attraction and in charge. A.W. Tozar once stated that, and I quote, any evangelism which by appeal to common interests and chatter about current events seeks to establish a common ground where the singer can feel at home and is, is as false as the altars of Baal ever were. Every effort to smooth out the road for men and to take away the guilt and the embarrassment is worse than wasted. It is evil and dangerous to the souls of men. What say you? I hope you enjoyed the ride today. Please take a moment to hit the subscribe button notification buttons and like us and revisit our channel for more engaging and enlightening uh, content. If you want to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, please click on the button above labeled Prayer of Salvation or in the link in the description section below. Otherwise, thank you all for spending some of your time with me. Peace and blessings to you and your household.